Hello everyone, this is Church on the Rise in Beaufort, Ebervale, and we give you a very warm welcome. As you can see, our church is here ready to worship and ready to listen to the word. And we invite you, if you are listening, uh, to do the same with us. And so we pray that God will richly bless you this evening as you join with us. So we're just going to sing our first song uh, together in our own homes. You can sing to your heart's delight. So please join us as we sing together uh, a great little chorus song called Into Your Hands.
I wonder if you believe in Jesus. I wonder if you belong to Jesus. Well, if you're listening to this program this evening, just keep on listening and you'll hear more about the Jesus that loves you. At this moment, we're going to have a reading and Lana's going to read that reading. So uh, once you've uh, unmuted yourself, Don't panic. Okay. On it. <laughs> As they say, don't panic, Mr. Manrin. <laughs> okay, thanks, Lana. Okay. Luke 9, 51 to 56. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead of him who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked the Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them and they went to another village. Thank you, Lana. And uh, now we're going to have a prayer and Derek is going to share in that prayer. Thank you, Derek. I believe in you, Jesus. I know I belong with you. I just pray that today people in the service listening to this live and those of you who will watch it later on will know what it is like to have Jesus in your life. We give thanks Lord that you gave your son to die on the cross so we may be forgiven. We just pray at this time Lord for all our friends and relatives so let us think about those people that we know who are suffering at this moment, either through an illness, uh, through depression, through various other things that will be going on in their lives. So we just want to think and pray that you, Lord, will be there with them, that you will heal the hurt, that you will heal the pain and you'll heal the illnesses. We pray, Lord, that you, our great glorious God, who loves us so much, who wants us to know you through your Son. And we pray that tonight, as we listen to the word, as we listen to what you have to say in the word, that it will mean something to all of us in some way and through that word your lives of those people listening live and those people who will be listening later on that their lives will be changed by what we hear tonight we give thanks lord that you are our god that you left us your your the holy spirit and that your son, Jesus, gave his life in order that we can be saved. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Derek, for sharing in prayer. And uh, just like to say to those who are listening this evening that, and I've said this before, that we're a church that believes in the power of prayer. And certainly uh, we believe that uh, when we do pray, God hears our prayers. This coming week, we are setting aside some time uh, as we are part of the Destiny Church Network. And we are having a, a week of prayer and fasting. And folks, if you need prayer, please get in touch with us. Give us some of the details that you want us to pray for. 
we'd gladly do that for you. And uh, we just pray that God will bless you through that. And uh, so the opportunity is there. Each day we're going to be meeting online to pray. Um, and certainly as a church, we will remember you in prayer. So do get in touch and send us some information that you'd like us to pray for. And uh, we will do that. So now Paul is going to uh, share from the word. So over to you, Paul. Well, good evening, everyone. So we pray a minute, please. Father, we thank you for your word, which lightens up our path which teaches us about the way to heaven and centers our thoughts and our lives on Jesus. And I pray tonight, Lord, that my mind will be fixed upon Jesus and that what I bring will be from you, not myself. And I pray that you will have all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm sure that you'll all agree that there's nothing like someone who's determined. They're determined to do something. They will not be distracted. They are fully focused. They're all geared up and their face is set. And there's nothing you can do to stop them. Our oldest son is into running. And he's done a few half marathons. But his real goal was to run the London Marathon. It took a while for him to get in because you tried to book a year before, um, but uh, he had to wait a couple of years until he got accepted. And he went into training. He had a gym in his conservatory and every day he ran and increased gradually the length, the distance, that he was running until that last week, he was running up to 16 miles every day. Fortunately, someone said to him before the race, you will get to a point about halfway through the race where your body and your mind will tell you that you can't go on. And every mile on the uh, track, there's a post telling you the distance, the distance that you've gone and the distance that you've got to go. And you'll come to a point where there's about 22 miles gone. And the voice will say to you, drop out now. Your whole body and your mind will say, you can't do it, you've had it, don't go on. And the man said, it's there that you must determine to keep going to the end. And that's what he did. He said at that point that he got to about 22 miles to that post, his mind and his body said, drop out now, stop, stop. You can't do it. But he set his face to the line and he finished. And we've got a picture of him proudly wearing the uh, winner's uh, medal and a rib ribbon around his neck holding the medal and he's there I've done it I got another thing off my bucket list he set his face to the line and got there and so it was with Jesus as he went to the cross and I want to think about tonight the determined man the determined man and looking at this story that uh, Lana read for us, it follows a few stories of some remarkable miracles. The three of the disciples have seen Jesus transfigured up on the mountainside. There's been some incredible healings taking place. 5,000 people have been fed. Uh, a boy came forward with what we might call today's lunchbox. And Jesus turned it into enough food to feed 5,000 people 
remarkable mir miracles. And now Luke says, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And there is a version of scripture that says Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. And that's what I'll be saying. That's the version I'll be using tonight. Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. We just at the start of Lent, which traditionally for millions of Christians over the years has been a time to reflect on Jesus' journey to the cross and the great cost of the cross to Jesus. We can never even begin to imagine what it must have been like for him. But we read the stories in scripture and we can get an idea of what he must have gone through. I'm going to look first at the place, Jerusalem. He set his face toward Jerusalem. I've looked at this name, tried to find out the meaning of it. And there are scholars and scholars and scholars who've debated this forever uh, as to what it means. And I think that it probably means a city of peace. And this place is dear to the heart of the Jews. It was a center of so much for them. The big festivals took place there. The temple was there, but ironically, this place, the city of peace, was also a place of dispute for so often and still is. But Jesus' ministry up to this point was a ministry of healings, miracles, and teaching about the kingdom of God. And many people followed him and more and more as he journeyed along. But now the ministry changed and he moved into Judea towards Jerusalem. And the teachings became stricter and contained strong warnings. He was on his way to Jerusalem. Now, what happened in on the way to Jerusalem was that he sent some disciples ahead of him and asked some people in a Samaritan village if they would get things ready for him, it says. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. I'd always wondered what that meant. Why, why wouldn't they welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem? And I looked at the commentaries about this, and what happened was that uh, the Samaritans and Jews, of course, hated each other. Why was this? Well, back in the days of the kings, the Assyrians invaded Israel, and they settled there, and there became a time of interbreeding. So the Jews looked upon the people that came out of this interbreeding as an impure race. And so there was this hatred that grew up between the Samaritans and the Jews. And any Jews that were making their way to Jerusalem for a feast or any reason at all were not welcome in the land of the Samaritans. And so they would travel miles and miles and miles around Samaritan territory in order not to come into contact with this impure race of people. Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. Later on in the gospel, uh, there are three places where uh, we see this mentioned again, Jesus heading for Jerusalem. When the uh, Ten were healed of leprosy. He says he was on his way to Jerusalem. There's another time later on in chapter 18 where he says, Let us go up to Jerusalem. And there's another place where it just says he was on his way to Jerusalem. So Luke doesn't let us forget the fact that Jesus was heading resolutely 
for Jerusalem. And what would happen eventually in Jerusalem, as we know now, uh, looking back at the stories in scripture, but Jesus knew as he approached Jerusalem, what would happen was that there was opposition to him. There was rejection of him. And there was death on the cross, brutal death by crucifixion, the Roman method of execution. But Jesus set his face to Jerusalem where all that would happen and he knew it would. The place, Jerusalem. But secondly, the time. It says in verse 51, our text, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven. As the time approached. As we sit waiting for the uh, time for the service to start on Zoom, Wayne says to us, there's four minutes to go, folks. Time is approaching. In Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes chapter three, it says there's a time for everything. I won't go through the list because there's a long list there, but there's a time for everything. Even the time there was for the son of man the son, son of God, to die. There was a time for everything to happen to him. And Jesus knew this, and he knew what would come, and he knew when it would come. So we're looking at Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. The time and the place. And now we look at the face. He set his face. It's nothing like a, a set face. You get to know it if it's your partner or your friend or somebody just in the street, you can see it. The set face and you know you can't persuade them to go another way. You can't persuade them not to do what they're going to do. It's set. And Jesus' face was set, such that he was determined to go to Jerusalem, and it was written in his face. And there are some interesting points now. First of all, straight after this story that Lana read for us, Jesus spoke to the disciples about the cost of discipleship, the cost of following him. He was following a course that was going to cost him everything. He was following a course set for Jerusalem that would cost him his very life. He would lay down his life on the cross for us to save us from our sin. And if we accept him as our Lord and Savior, we will be saved and bound for heaven. And it's as if Jesus was saying to the disciples in the few stories we're going to look at briefly, if you're going to stay with me, if you're going to follow me, you must be prepared to pay the price. And that price would mean leaving behind certain things. First of all, it would mean leaving behind your home. In verse 57 of this chapter, it says, as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered, foxes have holes and birds of the air have their nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. We talk these days about the homeless. Jesus had no home. Secondly, it might mean leaving behind family ties. He said to another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And thirdly, it means your opportunity to reconsider. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. 
Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. There's no opportunity to reconsider. In other words, he's spelling out the cost. He's saying that's the cost of being my disciple. That's the cost of following me. You need to be determined. You need to set your face as my face is set. And secondly, Jesus sent them out on their mission. If you need read the next chapter, I'm not going to read it or preach about it, but he sent them on their mission. They had been observing from very close at his mission. He came to bring the kingdom of God to men. He came to bring a ministry of salvation to men. He came to heal the sick. He came to perform tremendous miracles that would display the glory and the power of God. He came to die on a cross to save the lost. Jesus came on that mission and he is saying to them, go out and save the lost, bring them to me, tell them about me, preach the gospel to them, pray for the sick and they will be healed and so many other things. So he said, as I have been on my mission and paid the cost, so you go on your mission. So Jesus, everything in him was focused on his goal. Tonight, I want to ask you a question. You and me, what is our goal? What is our goal as Christians? Are we prepared to pay the price, no matter what it is? We need to keep Jesus at the center of our lives, of all that we do and all that we say. It's a challenge, isn't it? Because we so often forget. We often say something and think, oh, I've done it again. We often do something and think, oh, no, I should never have done that. What will they think? I've ruined my, my witness. God is merciful and he forgives us, but those people will never forget. We must be careful to keep Jesus at the center of our lives in all we do and say and even think. We need to seek to give him the glory in all that we do and say. We need to be determined as Jesus was determined focused on our goal, focused on our mission. Jesus was a determined man. He set his face toward Jerusalem. Are you, am I, determined? Determined to carry out the mission that God has called us to, to perform, to reach the lost for Jesus. Let's go out there and get those people. If we can't go out at the moment, even so, we can pray for them. Pray for the lost to be saved until that day when we can go out and tell them about Jesus once again. He set his face towards Jerusalem. Let's set our face towards our goal. To him be the glory. Amen. Thank you so much, Paul, for sharing that word. It's an important word to each one of us, isn't it? Uh, we can get so waylaid. We can always make the excuse, oh, well, things are quite bad at the moment, so we don't have those opportunities. I believe God gives us opportunities each day. And so let's be determined. Even through this week of prayer that we're going to have, let's be determined to pray for the lost, to pray for those who are listening to this program, 
And if you are listening to this program and you felt challenged yourself, then please get in touch. There will be details at the end of the video and we'd love to uh, share with you. So do get in touch, get in contact with us. If you need some prayer, please let us know and we will pray for you. So we're just coming to the end of our service now and we're going to sing our final song. Uh, the song is called What a Beautiful Name. Our God is a beautiful God and he loves each one of us. So we're going to sing this together and then perhaps if I can ask Steve to close the service in prayer. So as we come together and as we sing this song, let's rejoice in our God. Amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name. Sin was great, your love was greater. 
Thank you, Steve. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for your word. I pray, Lord, that that word will go forth to anybody that is listening tonight. And if anyone, Lord, uh, is touched through it, I pray that you will bless them, that you will move in their lives. The Lord, lives will be changed for your glory. I pray, Lord, for anybody that listens to this transmission anytime during the next whenever. Lord, I pray that you will bless them, that you will draw near to them. Help them, Lord, to see how good you are. Yeah. Lord, I pray your blessing. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, folks, for joining us this evening. And again, the uh, offer is there if you need prayer to get in touch with us. So I'm going to ask all our church now to unmute themselves and say their farewells. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Cheerio. Bye. 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 Bye.